How's it going, guys? Past level question, dermatology, step one, internal family medicine, TCK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Follow me on Instagram, threads, mailman underscore medical, and me, HL, and man underscore medical. Links down below. If you mean Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Let's start the clip. 29 year old woman, one week history, discoloration of the fingers, three month history, daytime fatigue. She has a history of nosebleeds since adolescence. She works at dental hygienist. There's no autoimmune disease history in the family, which the following is most likely explanation for the findings. We have this image here, which I'll talk about as we move through the question. Try say abnormal angiogenesis, correct answer. So this is hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, aka osler weber Rondu, and this is what's going to go down. You're going to get a question on the U.S. simile where they're going to show you a finger or a tongue where there's red dots. Those are your telangiectasias, holy shit. And you need to know that you can also get them in the GI tract. They can cause bleeding, leading to iron deficiency, anemia, and fatigue, which this patient has here. In basically 100% of questions, they're going to mention nosebleeds. They might give you a 12-year-old where there's just been nosebleeds since early in life. They can give you an adult where they say nosebleeds since adolescence. These patients can also get pulmonary arteriovenous fistulae. That is an answer on one of the NBME exams. Some of you watching this clip have probably seen that before, where they can give you a high output cardiac failure. Okay, They might say three-month history of uh, shortness of breath on exertion. And they'll show you the picture of the finger or the tongue. Okay. They might even show you clubbing as well because, and that's non specific. That's just for the pulmonary condition, right? And uh, the answer would be arteriovenous fistulae. Okay. And that's hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, osloma dominant. This is a past level condition, as I said. If it's the first time you're hearing about it, you're like, really? This sounds weird. It's not weird. Very basic, very easy. Okay. So these are just telangiectasias on the finger. So let's just hop to the other answer choices here. Choice B, chill Blaine, wrong fucking answer. USMLE doesn't even assess this, even though this is an extremely important real life differential of tinea pedis. Okay, so chill Blaine's are where you have abrupt temperature changes uh, in the toes, such as someone who's out in the winter in cold weather and then goes into a hot shower and then he or she gets red itchy bumps on the toes. Those are known as chillblains, and they're just the vessel, the capillaries dilate too quickly. You get some leakage of blood, and it causes very itchy, uh, itchy slash swollen lesions on the toes. And some uh, people will think that they've got tinea pedis. It's not. It's called chillblains. I've never seen you assembly assess this, but in just in real life, that's if you're in family medicine, that should be something you're aware of. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, DNA virus, wrong fucking answer. So, okay, I was a bit of an asshole in that this could refer to herpes, HSV 1 or 2 for herpetic whitlow. Okay, W H I T L O W. And I was an asshole because I said dental hygienist here. It's very buzzy in terms of they might give you some vesicles on a finger in a dental hygienist, and then the answer is just DNA virus or acyclovir for treatment of herpes, it's herpetic whitlow. But even though I threw this in here, I mean, clearly we've got a broader presentation, the nosebleeds since adolescence, the fatigue, the discoloration. And I didn't mention anything about these lesions being uh, stinging or itchy or there being any type of um, primary fever or lymphadenopathy, lymph, lymphadenopathy. Not that they have to say that for whitlow. Uh, but they'll classically just say that you've got this um, vesicular lesion, which this is not. This is more just uh, red punctate type hemorrhage telangiectasias. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, Raynaud phenomenon, wrong fucking answer. So don't really know what to tell you, okay? I mean, sure, it's something to be aware of, a uh, Crest syndrome, right? Calcinosis, Raynaud phenomenon, soft gel dysmotility, sclerodactyly, telangiectasias. So... You can develop pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary fibrosis, both in diffuse and in limited. It's not It's not just limited to limited. Holy shit. It's not. You can see it. Um, and also renal involvement in diffuse subtype. But Raynaud phenomenon, this is just going to be discoloration of the fingers in response to temperature. Um, blue, white, red. Okay, so you can get uh, hypoxia initially where they're blue in cold weather. And then you can get reactive hyperemia when the fingers are warmed and they become red, okay? And sometimes just white. And one of the answers on a 2CK MBME form literally is wear warmer weather or warmer clothing in the winter. 
Okay, I've, I've seen students get that wrong and it's like not fucking hard. It's not rocket science, all right? You just have to know that um, apart from wearing warmer clothing in the winter, if they, if they force you to choose a pharmacologic agent for the treatment, they like dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, nifedipine and lodipine. Obviously, you're going to decrease uh, capillary uh, constriction if you give one of those agents. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, RNA virus, wrong fucking answer. Could refer to Coxsackie A, okay, hand, foot, mouth disease, classically pediatric. It's not impossible to occur in adults. Sometimes it does happen in adults. You know, if they gave you a daycare worker, for instance, right, it's possible, um, or a mother of a child who's had it, but it's classically pediatric, and there's no mention of uh, lesions on the uh, feet and mouth. Holy shit, okay, they don't mention that, and we've got a broader vignette here, which clearly with the nosebleeds, I mean, this points toward a hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia is a better answer. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'll make you make more content if you like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.